And uh, Ty Wolf was the one that, that put it into the town and they put the engine in the ambulance and they had, could they, they got a, a long block meaning that it had a head on it, oil pan, so they had to put a manifold, fuel manifold on the engine, the intake manifold on the, for the carburetor on it, and in the process of taking the manifold off the old engine, they found inside the engine probably a cup full of Black Beauty. Black Beauty is an abrasive what they use for sandblasting. It's made from the plant down in, Bo in Bowen, New Hampshire where they burn coal, they have cinders and they grind it up and they sell it as Black Beauty as a grinding compound. So I'm sorry, Mrs. Levine, how is this pertinent? It, it, well, it, it, it's, it, it, it is because it's a patent what's going on and it's the same thing with this truck. The voters, what I'm getting at is the voters have approved for, the, for this truck to be repaired and put <coughs> back in service again. If this truck was put back in service again, you've got an, another attack truck. And the idea that we're thinking of I'm thinking of it on the budget can because of the recession that we've been having that if we can get four or five years out of this truck okay that we we could uh, then we could buy a new truck this truck could be still kept as an attack truck so now you've got two attack trucks if you wanted it and you know this old truck you look back at the records on it but nothing done to it. Hasn't had a radiator in 25 years. It's the same engine, same transmission. The rear end was, has been new because something happened to it. They put a new gas tank in it, okay? The fire pump is the same one that was in it ever since it was new. So you know, basically this old truck has served the town damn well. And Nobody's put any money into it, and you can go back to the records of what Kevin has got here. And the highway department has called that truck in to have some service done on it, and they refused to do it. it wasn't the fault of him. It was the fault of the previous chief. They were just going to let the truck run out, run it in the ground, and the taxpayers were going to get a new truck. And I heard from one prominent businessman in the town of Guilford says, one of the firemen says to him, he says that people in Guilford have a lot of money and they're going to buy us a new truck. That's their attitude. I'm sorry, but that's what they said. Okay? So, here we are with the taxpayers saying that we should repair the truck. I think we're going in a wrong, a wrong a, 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 a roundabout way of getting this truck fixed. I know it's probably going to cost thirty, thirty-five thousand dollars to put a new pump in, but the highway department can do a lot of this other work, to, and the brakes are nothing. Big deal. Might cost fifteen hundred dollars to put some brakes on that truck. The labor is, is, is cheap down here in the highway department, as opposed to going to. Any other place, some big garages or something, where they're going to get eighty-five bucks, a hundred dollars an hour to work on a truck. Selectman Hayes actually asked if, if by patent myself would be willing to do the, the brake labor, and we agreed. Yes. Mr. Dory, do you have anything to add to the discussion? I do. I have, if I may, I have a quick question um, for Mr. Horvath, and then a couple points. First, data. where would you turn for additional information? local government said it would be fun. Uh, but simply uh, the town says uh, that they've consulted with the lawyer. Uh, it should be simple enough to have his opinion which would bring us back to either case law or to RSAs where that's an appropriate method where we are proceeding with a special meeting as opposed to an emergency meeting. And then at that point it's still the same thing. Um, you know, we're, we're looking at uh, $50,000 being put into a truck this year, which could be done just like that by the selectmen uh, without any of us here. That doesn't enter us into the long-term lease. They want the long-term lease, that's fine. But I don't know how we get there because the, the RSAs that I read that says no means no, and this is essentially the same thing repackaged. 
So back to my question, the LGC and a printed, uh, I, I, a printed opinion for the attorney. I, I, I'd like to have something that would help us so that we, uh, because I don't think we're being asked to do something. Uh, so the LGC, I'm, I'm trying to get specific here. Yeah, I mean, well, they're the people that put the uh, LGC and a printed opinion from the attorney. Yeah, I mean, interest. they've got the opinion. Why don't they give it to us? Okay. You know, uh, okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, what's the harm? I know we're under a tight timetable, but what's the harm with asking those questions? And at the same time, there was a, at least a couple people from the public that I think brought up a good point. I don't know it's how the options are clearly delineated. And I, I think they, I think the fire department and the, and the board of fire engineers may understand what those options are, but maybe it would be helpful to have A, B, and C and why those are feasible right now in, in your all's opinion or not? Because um, at least a couple of people have said, well, is it possible to, to do a use, et cetera? <clears throat> Whatever they are, what would be the harm in, in, in having that in black and white, getting the LGC to weigh in, and showing up here a week from now, reconvening, and uh, going <coughs> Because at, at the same time, we're answering the concern of a at least one board member, we're also uh, we're also responding to the concerns of to at least some of the public that was here tonight. So what's the harm? It would that throw our timetable off if we yes. a week from now we came back here to do without the selectmen are scheduled to finalize the warrant on um, June May third next Friday, Wednesday night. Uh, but what that's well, what the schedule is, but the question is if we that's the finalization of the warrant. Well, well, we still meet on Thursday, a week from today, and make our recommendation, which is what we're being asked for. Um, all I can tell you is that if you met next Thursday, that that is the day after the selectmen are planning to sign the warrant. Without a recommendation from the budget committee. Is, so is the recommendation for the budget committee required prior to? No. When we sign the warrant, it's a done deal. That's what. That's exactly why we didn't do it last night. But I, but I think what you're interested in having us do is place our our statement of whether we're in favor or not, so that appears on the ballot. Exactly. So whether you put the warrant in place or not uh, doesn't affect our ability to say whether we're approving it or not. Right? It won't be printed on the ballot. Oh, <laughs> are you printing it Wednesday night? We're we're signing it Wednesday night. Well, there's, there's a slight difference between the warrant and the ballot. Like there's, a yeah. slight, there's a significant difference between the warrant and the ballot. The warrant that the budget committee has been invited to make a recommendation. And, and all I can tell you is the selectmen have scheduled a meeting on the third. Now, if they go to that meeting and they don't have a recommendation from the budget committee in hand, what will the selectmen do? I don't know. Um, the, the deadline to have the warrant signed is 14 days before June 20th. That's the absolute deadline for the selection to sign. What's the significance of that date, sir? It's in statute. Okay, thank you. Well, you know, we could maybe discuss dates and all. I'm just asking as as an alternative to voting tonight because there is some discomfort about what we're being asked to do. And also I think there's some legitimate public questions about alternatives that could at least be aired and presented to us. Is there an option for us to meet between now and when we absolutely have to in order to meet whatever other timeline? And get that information in the end. Great changes there motion there is. Well, I think that right now we have a motion on the table that's ready to be voted. Well, and I'm and as part of this, I'm I'm tossing that out because it is good. And based on what I just said, I will probably vote against that motion because I prefer to see this. I prefer to have additional time. Madam Chair, yes. Do we take a vote that would include alternatives? So we support replacing the truck by. A different means than you use for something to something that would be not that would be not a Yes, that would you have, have you have three choices. You can recommend this warrant on go. You can not, not recommend, recommend this warrant on go, or you can take no position. 
and, and I think my purpose in asking for the alternatives being printed, not only for the public, uh, the value of providing that information to the public, but also you know, perhaps it's informative to people who would hear both in favor of this warrant article or not, to be able to see those alternatives in black and white and say, okay, given those, I understand that I'm with this or not. Anyway, that's my um, Scott, when you say you, you can take no position, so it would say the budget committee takes no posi position, or each individual would take any position or no? I, I would imagine just there would be nothing on the warrant that made any reference. Just do the selectman recommendation, that's all. And the budget committee would be just nothing. Right. I don't make that decision. No, 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 but I mean. <coughs> We have on the table a, a, a motion to bring this to a vote to recommend in a second. I'm going to comment right now. I'm, I'm, when this comes to a vote, I'm going to vote against the recommendation because we haven't had adequate debate. All sides haven't been heard. And still, I got a list of questions as long as my own. Uh, in, in Every time I go to ask, it's been shut off. And, and without proper debate, we can't have civility. We can't. It's going to be a no vote for me. And I, I truly believe, as we've been told last year, no, no appropriation, no recommendation. We're not required and we're not authorized. Our authority ends when the money issues end. Chair, one thing that concerns me greatly and has over the years, and I've expressed it, is that we have never, ever looked at a used piece of equipment. The answer has always been, nope, we can't do that. I think this is the time to look at that. It's got to happen. We can't keep spending for $500,000, 800 a million bucks on equipment. And you stop and think of the millions and millions of dollars worth of equipment that is in the mutual aid system. I think we can avail ourselves of that, change the mutual aid system so it's more accommodating to the cities and towns. Something has to give. And if it's going to be a used piece of equipment, maybe that's the way to go for the first time ever in Guilford. Look, look, I think the answer to that that they've stated before that I've heard is that it's going to screw up the whole um, schedule to the point that at some point within three years time we'll be looking to replace the used equipment and looking to replace engine two uh, you know now we're talking a million bucks and I'm just putting that out as what I got out of this presentation that's precisely what uh, a detailed delineation of the options would put in front of all of us where, okay, option A is used equipment, that point would be there. It would it would affect the future. Um, as, as you just said, I mean, lay those out so that when we, uh, and, and I, so, so that when we make this determination, we've, we've taken that due diligence step. One other small point. I think we will all, I personally will stipulate that our, that our maintenance program in the past has not been adequate. So that's why I'm not interested in further discussion of that point. I stipulate that. I think it's clear. We felt well, that. We talked to everyone. So, and to Terry Stewart's point before, I don't think that issue is going to go away. So the fire engineers and the fire department will expect to hear a questions next time around about what our program is, how it compares to other towns, how it should be done, what we can change to make it right from here on out. I don't care about the past. It's done. I, we, I, in my personal opinion, we stipulate that and and focus on this. If if I, if I was allowed to speak, you would have heard me make the comment that I'm not attacking the policies as they are now. I'm actually in, in right along. I mean, I've been attacked for letters that was written to the editor. If you go back and you read them, it was maintenance issues. I'm not attacking firefighters of the job they do. You do a great job saving people's houses and then. Luckily, my house has never burnt down. I have no problem with that. I'm not a firefighter. In fact, according to some people I recently read online, I'm just a dumb garbage man. So I'm going to take it for what it is. Simple fact is, what I'm trying, I've been offering to help. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying, I'm offering to help. I, 
Uh, I've spent time, my own time, away from my children, my family, my businesses, to try and help. I've donated $150 grease gone in a case of grease to yet, has yet to been used. And, and that is first echelon maintenance. That is driver level maintenance. You hold a CDL, that's, that's part of holding a CDL. Now, whether or not it's in your job subscription or not, that's pot of driving a commercial vehicle. It's this basic maintenance. And, and I don't want to hear that there's a big difference between dump trucks, rubbish trucks, and... <laughs>